PC gaming was something of a mystery to me growing up. All too often I'd see some screenshots of a really cool looking game in a magazine, only to then be crushed to see that it was only for the PC. But that all changed around 1998 when we got our first PC. A Think Tiny PC. And the jingle has been stuck in my head for over 20 years. Think big about your PC. Come down to the tiny sale for big, big bargains on amazing PCs. Think tiny. DVD intense. Why don't you back up? And also what? But I'll tell you what is intense. This fucking box art. We've got a ginger bloke with dreads doing a yoga pose. We've got a swirling vortex. We've got some crazy laughing faces on TV screens. A giant claw. At first, I thought this bloke's name was Norm and, and the title was a play on that. But, but no, he's called Kent. As Kent, a shameless dreamer, you must explore the vast city of Neutropolis through true 3D movement. Uh, authentic, genuine, uncannily realistic. Doors. Stop. I mean, what are we waiting for? Let's pop this bitch in. So we get this noir opening with Kent's annoying, bit-crushed voice giving us some backstory. I began to learn the shady history of Neutropolis shortly after my week-long <coughs> holiday in the Blue Pens. Most events happened before my time, but I was soon to get swept up in the events which had transformed this radical, free-thinking utopia into the polluted pit of boredom it is today. Then we get this. I was spending a little quality time, walking a couple blocks and whistling a particularly annoying tune I had composed. Suddenly, from out of the smog... The audio is all over the place in this game. I swear the siren covered up some dialogue there. Uh, hi guys. So Kent gets a week in jail for whistling. Oh, oh they're lovely boots, Kent. <laughs> they look like two giant jars of Marmite. What a radical dude you must be! So on his last day in prison, he gets a mysterious letter telling him that there are other like-minded, free-thinking rebels like him and that he should start looking for them over by the factory. And well, the game begins. It's a 3D, Doom-style point-and-click game. Honestly, pretty impressive for the time, but oh fuck does it feel dated now. And when I say 3D, I mean that weird kind of 3D, like Doom, when you move around dead enemies or barrels, and you know they're 2D, but you can't quite catch the angle to prove it. When you press page down to look down, everything becomes so warped it makes me want to be sick! And like all other point and click games, you use the mouse to interact with your environment and pick up items. Then, try to use those items to solve puzzles. And sometimes, in normality, you're treated to an ultra-realistic motion capture sequence. Let's see what's down here. Aha! There's some mu- ah! That's done it. I've broken it. You sure did, Kent. You sure did. It's been fucking 10 seconds and I already hate him. And Kent comments on everything. His bit crush voice starts grating on your ears like that one guy in chat with a shit mic. Oh, too loud! I'm going to build deluge for my speakers if I ever see them. Great song, though. Arnie, Arnie, diddy, Arnie, well, my car's got no wheels, but I'm still rolling. Yee -hee. Oh. You use Kent's little voodoo doll to interact with things. His eyes to inspect, his mouth to speak, his right arm to use an item, his belly to open something, and his left arm to pick stuff up. It's cumbersome, to say the least. And it's not always clear what Kent has to do to an object to interact with it which makes him spout more useless bits of dialogue when you get it wrong. No way, they're probably alive with creepy crawlies. No way, they're probably alive with creepy crawlies. Even the manual gets confused. It says use the left hand to use an item and it's pointing to Kent's right hand. 
Then it says, use the right hand to pick up things with the grappler, and it's pointing to Kent's left hand. Unless they didn't think we were fucking smart enough to work out if someone's facing you, their arms are the other way around, man, whoa! And in classic point and click style, I'm stuck. So it's time to play a quick game of what the fuck was the developers thinking. And in this particular case, you have to combine the bird toy with the remote control so the TV stays on, which will stop the guard from coming in and we can climb out the window. I'll be glad to get out of here. Carefully does it. Don't look down. Here is where we meet Di for the first time. And to get him to take you down to the street, you've got to get him some coffee. Only problem is he wants milk in it. Oh well, I'm sure this paint will do. There you go, Di. Get this down, your son. Well, I don't suppose it wouldn't hurt that much. Okay, made it down to the street. Time to ex... <sighs> I walked around this place for ages until I realised M opens up the map. So I make my way to the factory, where a lady says we're too thin to work there. But when Kent points out he's wearing a t-shirt that states otherwise, she's okay with it. So I have a quick look up her dress and move on. Let's see how well Kent can handle a simple cup of coffee, shall we? Ow! That's just boiling! Whoa, ah, oh no! Ah! Oh, miss. <laughs> so this mutant is the boss of the furniture factory. He looks like Conan O'Brien if he let himself go. I wish I could listen to the dialogue, but that trumpet won't shut the fuck up! Yeah, you'll come to appreciate. Now, tell me. When he finally stops talking, we get to explore the factory. See that? That is how I know this game is British. This was the exact drawing you draw on your mate's workbook at school when he weren't looking. A fat chick with fat tits. Classic. I must have walked around the factory for an hour. I got so confused. Also, what the fuck is going on with this bloke on the bed? 2D? 3D? What kind of D is this? I had no idea where I had to go until about the fourth or fifth time I walked to the dining area and luckily noticed this door which leads to a vent. Jeepers, Kent can crawl! <laughs> let's, let's see that again. What does the case say again? See these authentic, genuine, uncannily realistic sequences from in the... F this puzzle took me about 20 minutes. You have to use some wires and a battery, then connect a little fan, then put some rubbish on the bed, which makes one of the guards come up and fall asleep. Like, what? <laughs> but now we can interact with the conveyor belt. So you meet this crazy bitch and join the revolution, yay! She gives you a videotape of this rock star, Brian Deluge, that she wants you to broadcast to the nation. Now on the map screen, you can select the TV station. Only problem now is the bouncer won't let me in. And to get past him, you have to scare him off by putting a rat in a box. Now the rat and the box are both back at the apartment. So if you didn't pick them up and or combine them, which is completely understandable, you'd be here till the fucking cows come home. Inside the TV station, we have a living blow-up sex doll, a receptionist with pecs, and a technician that sounds like Fozzy Bear. Hey, get away from me, or I'll pull a norm. Do you want to shoot up my back or something? Scram! I find the video player and insert the tape, but nothing happens. So I start pointing and clicking, and I find out I need a fucking password to play the tape. I tried one, but it didn't work. Now I'm at my wit's end. 
Luckily, I go and talk to the technician again, and he now has a password dialogue option. You may not be subversive, but you sure look weird. I'm sorry, but I can't tell you the password. I'm weird. I can't believe Kent's so shocked that someone thinks he's weird. I mean, you could live a thousand lifetimes across multiple galaxies and not come across anything like Kent. The technician refuses to give you the password. So when life gives you lemons, you throw some shit at it. What do you think you're doing, Bozo? Well, you dirty it, you clean it! Now we've got the technician's shit-covered shirt. Bit cryptic, but you have to use the shirt so it changes to the ID badge. Then you use the ID badge to discover the password, which is the technician's middle name. So I enter the password, and I now can play the tape. Hold on to your fucking butts. Where were you the day Sol exploded? And that's coming on the 5th of the month. Over to Barbara. And now we have a very important video clip of the latest best-selling single by Brian Deluge. Now that is how you start a revolution. <laughs> Next, we have to go to the Mint Mall, where this cryptic point and click adventure shifts into overdrive. First, there's this freak who wants something to read, and in return, she'll give you some matches. Now, at this point, I had nothing to give her or him, and the item she needs is all the way back at the factory in a locker room, where every locker is locked except for one. I honestly thought I was wasting my time. I must have tried about 20 lockers until this one popped open. I mean, fuck point and click adventure games. Now I can go into the mall where we meet Brian, who is another member of the revolution, yay! What can you tell me about your subversive group, Bray? Nothing you need to know right now, Nosy Parker, so just shut up and keep quiet, Kent. You'll know more when you earn the right to know more, know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. He's a bitchy little cunt. He runs Disco Lala, where you'll find albums from the Six Pastels and the Flashing Pumpkins. Next, we have the toy shop, Thrifty Fifty. Do you enjoy working in here? <laughs> you do stuff like that and it'll stunt your growth. Uncle Jeb was only 32 centimeters tall at the age of 30. Are you listening to me? You have to combine the small glider toys with the puppy toys to float them over the item scanner at the door. And you have to do this like five times. Next, you have to combine the big glider with the wire cutters and float that over too. Then you gotta go to the supermarket where this beast resides and cut down this speaker using the wire cutters and connect it to the stereo in Disco Lala. This fish has seen some shit. Then you gotta pick up the Total Clap CD, put that in the stereo. Once that's done, we're treated to this little piece of art. <laughs> And if all that ain't enough, you now have to go and stand where the guard was and light a match. Who in a million months of Mondays would ever guess to do that? Base of the waffle is the best place. Hang on a minute. Hey, Norm! Never mind that pack of wild animals. Come and attend to this raging inferno. Pronto! Everybody, lie down, take short panting breaths, and don't move. Make your way to the nearest exit. I will deal with the fire. Do not panic! So now we find ourselves in this dark little room, where I guess the best thing to do is light another match. Those crates are full of firecrackers! No, it's not over yet. We ain't getting off that easy. So the guard at the mall gets some metal lodged in his head and becomes good? 
Now I have to infiltrate the Norm Trooper headquarters for some reason. I don't know. I've lost the will to live at this point. Where I guess they're performing some fucked up experiments on people. I mean, this looks bad to me. Then I get a passcode to access this underground space jail. Seriously, what is this game? Where we find that the good leader, Saul, twin brother to the bad leader, Paul, who everyone thought was dead, is actually still alive. Then we get caught by Paul and put into space jail too. I got so confused here. I went around and around for ages. You're in a loop of three prison cells and each cell has a puzzle. You have to find three gizmos, one in each cell. Cells one and two are easy enough and the gizmos can be found the first time around. Cell three, not so much. And every minute or so, you get sucked out of whatever cell you're in and into this tube, which sends you down into this fucked up place for a minute. Then you get sent to cell one for a minute, get sucked out again, wait a minute, get sent to cell two for a minute, get sucked into the fucked up place for a minute, then finally get sent back to cell three and continue trying to solve the puzzle. It's fucking absurd. Anyway, the trick is you have to use the bracket thing from cell two on the loose tap in cell three and flood the cell. Once you collect all three gizmos, you're able to break out with Saul. <laughs> Saul, I'll get die. Leave me, Kent. I'm old. We got what we came for. Now go. But die, I can't. <laughs> Sorry, die. Try not to die. Imagine that. Imagine getting shot in the lung, and the last thing you see is this miscreation making a pun. So Kent and Saul make it back to base, where Saul tells us a little bit more about what the fuck is going on in this game. They are part of the Mood Magnet, a terrible machine that I am solely responsible for. In what way are you responsible, Saw? I created a terrible machine, a machine which sucks out people's ideas and free will and stores it for later inspection. If Paul has ripped off and built this amazing mind suction device, how come we aren't as dull as the other folks? Luckily, there is one flaw in the magnet's design. A small piece of metal in the body is enough to earth and protect an individual. That is the sole reason we are different. Ah, oh, so that's why Norm 2782 has had such a sudden change in his life. The shrapnel lodged in his brain. It cured him, like the drill bit that snapped and lodged in my leg during one of my first experiments. That would certainly do the trick. Crude, but very effective. I have an old-fashioned hip replacement. And you, Kent? I have a ball bearing stuck in my ear. <laughs> of course you did, Kent. Oh, fucking hell, of course you did. you got to be the worst video game character ever. Next, we're told we need to break into the mind-controlling signal booster, which is found underneath TV Heaven. What the fuck is this game anymore? So Kent, in his bumbling incompetence, blows shit up again. And I'm beginning to think we're more like terrorists than revolutionaries at this point. And once again, I become lost. Running around everywhere, clicking everything. So I had to resort to using the guide. And it says I have to use this pipe on this truck. Now you'd think connecting this pipe to anywhere on the truck would be good enough. But no, you have to connect the pipe to this tiny little pixelated hole on the passenger side. I mean, fuck me. So we pump some poisonous gas into the truck and rescue Die. Because apparently this wasn't enough to kill an old man. Okay, so our next mission for this pacifist group is to create a missile and blow something up again. Right, we're definitely fucking terrorists at this point. Yep, yep, 100% we're terrorists. After destroying the Pollutatron building, the air clears and the sun returns. And Saul suddenly remembers he has a backup brain underneath the stadium. And if we can get it, he'll be able to help the city. I mean, what the fuck is going on? You'll recognize us because we will all be wearing disguises. You will recognize us because we will be wearing disguises. I mean, forgive my fucking ignorance, but isn't the whole point of a disguise so I won't recognize you, you Jane Fonda leotard up your ass wearing bitch? I'm finally on the last mission. First, I needed to use this brick on this little gap so I can reach the batteries and power the night vision goggles. 
Took me about 20 minutes to figure that out. Is that... Are those... Oh, it's the Ninja Turds! <laughs> Alright, the game gets a point for that. Fat chick with fat tit. Two points! You get two points, normality. So we find a jacket in a crate and the secret lab where Saul's brain is. And naturally, we combine the jacket with the brain and get this. Gotta be quick. Put me somewhere safe as soon as possible. And all that's left to do now is make our escape. No boss fight, nothing. Just walk into the fucking lift. So Saul dies, but his second brain fuses with his evil brother and they become Super Saul. Then Brian Deluge starts playing and we get like five minutes of dancing. What a revolution. Can't wait to see the utopia these pissheads create. <laughs> What a wonderful final image, and it perfectly sums up exactly how this game made me feel. In fact, I was sick for like two weeks after playing this game, and in the depths of my fever dreams I had visions of like Kent and Ninja Turds, and all the other fucked up things I saw in this game. And when I finally woke up, I was like Dorothy Gale at the end of The Wizard of Oz, and, and you were there, and you were there, and I went on a journey. Alright, is it the worst game in the world? Nah, but it ain't the fucking best either. But for 90s nostalgia's sake, I think it can stay in the attic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.